Hello everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Now, full notice, because I have started working a second job, my TBR is going to decrease in size just a tiny bit. Because until I know how regularly I will be working said second job, I, I don't know. However, it is almost winter here. Well, let's be real. We already had snow, so it's basically winter here. So I begin hermit moding. So we'll see how many I actually get read. But nonetheless, these are the books that I at least want to attempt to try and read in the month of October. And because, you know, themes and October, I'm not a big fan or reader of like horror or gothic stuff, but there's been a lot of things in the last couple like months that have come out with like witches or dark tones or gothic-y uh, covers and that kind of stuff. So I am going to try and give them a chance. October is like, I'm a very mood reader. So if, there, if I'm ever going to read it, it's going to be in October because as soon as November hits, we snap like whiplash from Halloween to Remembrance Day to Thanksgiving in Canada. So, and then it's Christmas. So, I mean, November, November 1st is the end of Halloween here. So the first book that I'm going to try and read this month is Scream All Night by Derek Millen. I actually had this on my September TBR because I got all my dates mixed up. I thought we were doing a group read in TBR and Beyond in September, I think. And yeah, so Scream All Night, super, super curious to read it. I know it's supposed to be dark. The main character has left his family for some reason, I think it is. And he comes back to help the family try and pick up the crumbling pieces of a horror production company that I guess used to be where he used to live or something. And I think some old romance comes into it. And yeah, I've just heard like really positive things and people read it. They're like, this is your kind of comedic tone. So I'm very curious about that. And like I said in my last video, the cover and like the, just the concept of it gives me like very Rocky Horror Picture Show-esque sort of feeling vibes. So I'm very curious about this one. Also, because she is visiting the TBR and Beyond group, I am going to pick up Girl at the Grave. I was pretty curious about this one. Sorry, by Terry Bailey Black. Terry Bailey Black. Um, it's supposed to be like a historical fiction where like a bunch of weird things are happening in a small town, I believe it is. And that's really all I knew. The cover looks pretty like up my alley. And the font of it honestly looked really up my alley. And I'm just... The fact that it's blurbed by... Um, Cat Winters, who wrote Odd and True, which is like such an underhyped book that I freaking loved so much. Maybe I should read Odd and True this month. Ooh, game changer. I never even thought of that book. I have too many books. Oh, that's not possible. Girl at the Grave. It looks really cool. It sounds really cool from the summary. And actually, when I checked this out from the library, the person was like, let me, can you let me, because I know people at the library, because my job. And they're like, can you let me know what you think of this? Because I'm actually kind of curious about this one. I hadn't seen it before until you came to pick this one up. So hopefully it's really good. But I like the Explore by Carrie Maniscalco and Cat Winters, because I've, I've read both of those authors and really thoroughly enjoy their stuff. So, yeah. I also plan on finally reading the arc that I have of Toil and Trouble. You can understand how old this arc is because it still has 16 tales. It was published with five because one of the authors was ousted in that big, like, kids' literature um, sexual harassment scandal. So they dropped it down to five, or down to 15. But I, this arc is so old that, like, actually, I don't know. I, I think they probably didn't reprint any of the physical arcs after they removed it. So that's probably why. But I've had this arc since, like, February. But it, and it sounds really, really cool. Right up my alley. Even though it's, like, anthology short stories, which I don't normally love. The topic was, like, well, I'm at least going to give this a try anyways. So I'm going to finally read it. And I haven't decided if I want to actually read the Tristan, um, Tristina Wright story or if I just want to skip that one. I don't know. We'll see what I feel like once I get there. I mean, I didn't in any way financially support her, but yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so anthology of witches and witchcraft and women, and I'm just really excited. The author's in here actually too. Um, one of the editors was Jessica Spotswood, and I read her Born Wicked book, which I didn't mind. Um, Taylor K. Magia, Andrea Kremer, Tess Sharp, Lindsay Smith, Brandy Colbert, Shiveta, Sh oh, I'm so sorry, I'm butchering these names. Thakrar, Robin Thaley, Nova Ransuma, Zareda Cordova. I know that name. She wrote the Bruja Born or something like that. Uh, Brenna Yovanoff, Kate Hart, Jessica Spotswood, and Marie McLemore. Oh, I didn't know she was in here. No, I probably did. I just forgot by now. Um, Emery Lord, She Who Shall Not Be Named, and Elizabeth May. So I'm very curious about this one. 
because the fate smiled upon me this month, I was able to be the first one to get a copy of City of Ghosts. This is the first one, actually, I think, in all of our library systems to get cataloged and become available, and I was the only one on hold for it somehow. But I'm very excited about this. I know it's supposed to be first in a series. I know it's middle grade. I know I was interested in it. I've enjoyed Victoria Schwab's writing. I'm not fangirl the way some people are about it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, I just enjoyed some of her books. I enjoyed part of the Darker Shades of Magic trilogy. I was kind of done with it by the time it got to the end of the third book. I actually think I read or tried to read The Archivist years ago, but didn't end up liking it. But I've read the Savage Song duology, and I actually quite enjoyed that one. So I am very curious about this one. However, I didn't want to spend like $25 uh, to buy a book that I wasn't totally sure I was going to like. So I don't know a ton about this book, but it is a middle grade. Our main character is a girl who's almost drowned, I believe, but like she comes back like she's alive. But I guess when that happens, she like kind of begins to be able to see like the paranormal world and her best friend is a ghost. And then all of a sudden her parents land this gig to like host a TV show of like the most haunted places in Scotland or something like that. So that's where it goes. I think that was what really intrigued me was like haunted places in Scotland. And I was like, oh, okay. I was debating pushing this book until November, but we got snow already, so it, I guess it was appropriate for Winter Glass by Alexa Hillier. I did my reread of Spindlefire last month, I think it was, and so this is just the continuation of the retelling of A Sleeping Beauty. A curse comes undone, a kingdom shatters, but some bonds can't be broken. And Spindlefire ended with someone waking up and just kind of like everything like... It's like in movies where like if there's superpowers where everything's hovering and then you're just waiting for like someone evil to come crashing and destroy everything it's like that that's what it felt like when it ended like that and i was like oh super excited to finally read how to hang a witch by adriana mather i'm so 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 curious about this i've heard nothing but fantastic things this sounds like hocus pocus and i'm so freaking here for it my god my peak like my my excitement just peaked Hocus pocus vibes. Actually kind of sounds a little bit like, um, oh, what was it called? Was it just called Casper? The one with, like, Chris, was it Christina Ricci when she was younger? I remember, like, the guy from, like, Ghostbusters, I think, was in it. I remember being like, oh, my God, these effects were amazing back then. And, like, man, I haven't watched that movie in quite a few years. Maybe I'll do that this October, too. But it kind of reminds me of that, too. Plus, she has my name. Oh, I'm so excited now. Oh, this will be at the top of the... The list and also this is the uk cover because i hate the us cover with a burning passion and in continuation of reading rereading the throne of glass series i plan on getting two queen of shadows my god this book is big and empire of storms in the month of october and then near the end of october uh kingdom of ash comes out so in november i will read tower of dawn and kingdom of ash and probably block out a whole week for myself to do that because it's like a thousand pages. I am really, really hoping to get to This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee this month. All I really know is that it takes place in like 1818 in Geneva, like Europe, and um, there's like clockworkers or something like that, which was the really interesting part because Timekeeper by Tara Sim has these like weird steampunky clockwork things, and I imagine it's just gonna be like that, but like darker. So... I'm very excited about this one. Alive, dead, alive again. So in an attempt to catch up on all of the Lindsay Fay books that I have before her next book comes out, because she's not a bi author for me now, I only read one book and it was Jane Steele, but it was so freaking good and I love it. Oh, maybe I should read Jane Steele this month too. Oh, I'm so indecisive. No, no rereading Jane Steele until I've finished reading all the books, by, like the four books I have by her that I haven't read. Okay, so I'm reading, going to try and read Dust and Shadow. Um, it's an account of the Ripper killings by John Watson. That part right there is what really, really piqued my interest, in addition to being Lindsay Fay. But honestly, I'm always here to read some, like, historically fiction-y retellings. But I really, really like when they take a thing like like Stalking Jack the Ripper, like the rap Ripper killings, and try and put, like, fictional characters in it, just spin it and make it a little bit different. Especially the Ripper killings, because honest to God, it bugs the bejesus out of me that we still don't know who this did it. There's so many conspiracy theories, and, like... <sighs> I am also going to try and squeeze in Watchmen by Alan Moore this month. I was going to try and read this, I think, two months ago, and it just didn't happen. And then I just wasn't in the mood for a graphic novel. So I feel like just though, like, all the superhero characters and all that stuff is probably a good one to read in Halloween. And then I decided to hurt my soul and put Legendary on the October TBR, even though it's, like, I don't think Finale comes out until May 2019. 
which I mean, it's actually not super far away. That's the perspective I want to think of it. But it's going to be, oh my god, that's forever away as soon as I finish this book. I just know it. But this is the sequel to Car of Val by Stephanie Garber, which was also a mind effort of a book. And... I just don't even know what to do anymore. I also plan on reading Talon by Julie Kagawan. I think that's how you say her name. She has a book coming out, I think in October or the end of September. No, it's probably October called Shadow of the Fox. I've never actually read any of her series before. And I finally, after being on the hold list for like six months, have a copy of Ta Talon coming. Is it getting adapted? Maybe that's why the holds list is so long. Well, I don't know. But I know that they're supposed to be dragons and that's really all I know. So I'm going into this one blind. I've somehow managed to have not read the summary after like all this time. So I'm very excited about that one. I also plan on trying to do a reread of These Vicious Masks by Tarun Shanker and Kelly Zakas. I'm going to eventually remember these authors' names, but they're both very odd names. And there's two of them. So uh, this is kind of like Victorian era X-Men is probably the easiest way to explain it. I read this last December and really, really loved it. So I'm going to do a little bit of a reread because I finally have the third book. So I'm very excited to do that. And I feel like just everything that happens in this book, because I know what happens in it, is very like Halloween-esque. So I'm very excited to reread it this one. I know it's also one that like, I feel like I'll be able to read and like relax. Whereas like things like Legendary, I know I'm going to be on like the freaking edge of my seat the whole time trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So this will be a nice calming read when I need one this month. And trust me, I will need one in October with people walking around and dressed up like clowns or like it and I'm going to panic and that's when that book is going to come in handy. I also really, really hope I'm getting to the arc that I have for Song of the Dead by Sarah Glenn Marsh. Um, I really loved Reign of the Fallen too, so I'm very excited about this. And it's supposed to be a continuation with Odessa and Meredith, I think, predominantly. I also have like this itching feeling that her boyfriend that died in the first book is not gonna stay dead. I just have this feeling, which kind of makes me think zombies, which kind of makes me think Halloween. So if I don't get to it in October, though, I will get to it in November for sure. I'm very, very excited about this. And the cover is just so cool. And the last book on my list to attempt to get to this month is Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco. This is going to be an if I can get it because unfortunately the bookstore up here doesn't carry it. And I honestly got just like, I don't want to have to buy all my books online. It's kind of frustrating to have a bookstore and then not be able to actually use it. So I'm planning on, well, not planning. I have to go to Edmonton in October. So near mid-October. So hopefully one of the bookstores, I assume it's Edmonton, will have a copy there. So I'm going to do a nice big haul there. I, mean, I have a list of books already that I'm picking up. And Escaping from Houdini is on it. I'm going to read it as soon as I get it because I'm so excited for that book. Oh, I love, I love Hunting Prince Dracula and, and Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I think reading the Dust and Shadow book this month too with the Stalking Jack the Ripper thing, uh, or not Stalking, the Jack the Ripper case involved in it is just going to make me like even more excited. So yeah. So those are all of the books that I'm going to attempt to read in the month of October. I'm hoping I can get most of them done. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books or what you plan on reading in the month of October. I would love to know. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.